So after months of thinking that Apple was gonna put iOS and iPadOS 17 kind of on the back burner in lieu of their new Reality Pro headset and the software that comes alongside with that, it looks like Apple's actually gonna make some nice improvements to the overall user interface and the overall usability of iOS 17 when announcing it at WWDC in June. So we got some new leaks and rumors that I wanna talk about and some things that we do expect to come because there's some changes that are gonna be very beneficial to a lot of iOS users and iPadOS users. But without further ado, let's talk about iOS 17 and everything that we realistically expect overall. And leave some comments down below of what you guys would want from iOS 17, like a password manager, which I know my man Steven Robles would love to have. But let's get into it. So it looks like one of the major changes of iOS 17, at least from a visual and UI standpoint, is that Apple's going to be finally changing what the control center looks like and maybe add some extra functionality built in there. So the control center has been relatively the same since the release. I remember when the control center was coming up from the bottom of the screen on the home button iPhones and then it moved to the top right of every single iPhone, but overall, from a functionality standpoint, the control center UI has been relatively the same with your main functions being activating a camera, turning up and down volume, turning up and down brightness, and then being able to add some more kind of quick toggles like maybe a quick note or your flashlight button and things like that. So the control center should get a nice little revamp. In terms of functionality, we don't really know what Apple's going to be adding in there. We do suspect that Apple's actually gonna give us a little bit more function and adjustability with the flashlight itself because right now with the flashlight, you have three or four settings in terms of how level of brightness or that level of brightness overall with the flashlight, but it looks like one of the updates that Apple's making to that control center and to that button specifically is that we're gonna have infinite adjustability of the brightness level of your flashlight, which teach their own. I mean, the three brightness levels for me were enough, but if people want that infinite adjustability, by all means, Apple's going to be giving it to us. Another new update for iOS 17 and iPadOS 17 is that the app library is gonna get a little bit more customizable. Now, I'm a big user of the app library. I like to keep my home screen very, very clean. Like, I only like to have one, max two pages on my actual home screen, and the rest, I literally put it in the app library, and whenever I need that application, I either go to the app library or just swipe down into my spotlight to search whatever I need to search for. But the way the app library is currently set up is if you download an application and you decide to just go and throw it into the app library, it categorizes itself based on the criteria that that app selects its category to be in in the app store. So now with the new iOS 17 library, which is gonna be very beneficial for me personally on the iPadOS side, is that we're gonna be able to do custom categories inside of the app library. So the idea is gonna be very similar to just creating your folders on your home screen like I do. Maybe you have your finance folder, your, you know, your games folder, your calendar folder, whatever the case may be. But now Apple will allow you to custom categorize that in the app library. So it's not gonna take up any space on your home screen, but you can still have your folders and your categories in the app library, which is gonna be a welcome addition overall. And it looks like Apple Music is gonna take another step forward in terms of customization and in terms of being just a little bit more user friendly and also adding some more functions. So some new things that are coming with Apple Music are the Apple currently, whenever you're listening to music or you have the Apple Music interface on, there's a lot of text that surrounds everything. The rumor is that Apple's gonna be removing a lot of text, similar to how Spotify does it. If you are a Spotify user like I am, Spotify has taken an approach, especially for the now playing section, where it's now you have kind of a moving video or moving album art that takes up the entirety of the screen as opposed to just like a square on the album art on the top two thirds of the screen. You still have the actual name of the song, you still have the name of the song and who it's by and things like that, but now Apple should be kind of adopting that user interface where now it's gonna take up the entirety of the screen where as opposed to just having the album art and then a similar color gradient behind it and they're actually gonna be removing some text and lose some video and images the same way that Spotify is doing. Like I mentioned before, I'm a Spotify user through and through. I do have Apple Music because I like to kind of see what they're doing overall, but whenever I'm listening to music, I'm going to Spotify you know, 99.9999% of the time just because I'm used to it, it knows my music, the algorithm is great, and then overall it's just a pleasure to use. So Apple kind of sees that and they're gonna to try to adopt that on their side. But one new feature that should be coming alongside of that which only will be capable of being done with Apple Music and not Spotify because Apple Music is a native app that can be built into the actual native OS. Apple Music is gonna allow you to have actual lyrics on the lock screen if that's something that you choose. I think this is gonna work kind of similar to the way the Google version of it works whenever it's listening to music and it tells you the name of the song, but this time it's gonna be lyric based as opposed to kind of Shazam or kind of finding out the music recognition side. So let's say you're listening to a song, you play that song and either on your home screen or possibly your lock screen, you're gonna have maybe three or four lines of the lyrics kind of cycling through. Now we don't know if that's gonna be a feature that's gonna be turned off and on inside maybe the music app or inside of the settings app, or if it's gonna be an actual widget that you put on the lock screen itself, 
but it looks like Apple's gonna be giving us that type of functionality on the home screen and lock screen moving forward through Apple Music exclusively. Because again, Apple Music is a native application that will allow Apple to do that. Versus something like Spotify is gonna have some restrictions. Maybe Spotify, they do have an actual lock screen widget. Maybe they can add it in that aspect, but it won't be as native as the Apple Music version. And then another feature that's really starting to pick up some steam is the ability to now further customize your lock screen. With iOS 16, we got a big upgrade in terms of customizing your lock screen with lock screen widgets, changing up the font, having like the bokeh effect on maybe some subjects where that kind of covers the clock itself, and also with live activities. So lock screen got a lot more personable, a lot more customizable, which is something that people really wanted from the iOS side and something that Android has had for years and years. But now the rumor is that we're going to be able to actually share those custom lock screens with friends and family, which is going to be a nice little addition. Now I hope Apple gives us a little bit more customization on the app icon side. It'd be great to be able to just download a theme, you know, purchase an icon pack and with the flip of the switch be able to switch all the applications without having to deal with shortcuts, but that's, you know, something for another day. But with the lock screen customization and sharing of those lock screens, that's going to be coming with iOS 17. And also, I am hoping that Apple's bringing those lock screen customizations to iPadOS 17. And then of course, with those lock screen customizations, Apple's just gonna double down on that, giving us more fonts, giving us more emoji wallpapers, and the ability to just customize it more overall, so giving us more and more options as time goes on, because Apple has fully integrated us into that lock screen customization. People seem to really like it. You know, I see it in other people's iPhones. No longer are we living in a world where everybody has the same exact lock screen, where just the wallpaper is different. Now we have different fonts, different widgets, different emoji wallpapers, and the list goes on. And then we should be getting a brand new application category directly from Apple natively, and that's gonna be a journaling app. Now I'm somebody that doesn't really journal too often. I know a lot of people you know, live with that on a daily basis where they wake up in the morning and kind of write down three things they're grateful for, maybe three things they can improve on and things of that nature because it helps with anxiety, it helps with mental stress, it helps you kind of focus on what needs to be done. And again, it makes you grateful for what you have already. So, so I see the appeal of journaling and Apple obviously is big in the mental health game was as they should because everybody seems to have an iPhone and if everybody's looking at it at all times, it should be known that Apple should be putting some mental health focus on people using their iPhones. So what they're doing is creating their own journaling app. Now we did get this information because the day one journaling application, which is a third party application, which actually received some awards from Apple back in 2014 for one of the best design apps in the app store. Their founder came out and said that they're getting Sherlocked, which means that Apple is going to be cannibalizing that application. And the reason he thinks that is because from 2014 to 2020, they worked hand in hand with Apple a lot of the time with suggestions, with recommendations on how to make the app better. But then in 2020, Apple seemed to have cut ties abruptly with them, meaning that they think Apple's going to be creating their, their own native journaling app, which wouldn't be the first time we've seen this happen countless times where Apple will just take an application that they see is very popular in the app store, they learn from it, they build a data set from it, then they get their engineers to build you know, their better version or their own version, the Apple way of that same application. So, so unfortunately, things like that day one journaling application will be in the back burner. Obviously, it's still gonna be available in the app store, but if it's built directly into iOS and it's kind of prepackaged in the actual installation, then it's gonna be hard for users to really gravitate to a third party app versus Apple's first party app. And let me know what you think about, first off, the journaling app, but secondly, also how Apple cannibalizes product categories and app categories by creating their own application after they've learned enough from it from third-party creators in their own app store. I think it's, you know, I'm all for a capitalistic society, but if it happens too often, then we're gonna be in a world where Apple is creating all of your native applications, which maybe from an efficiency sake, it'll help out overall, but it's always good to have those third-party applications and all those choices as well. And some last tidbits of news that kind of is a downer, especially in the US, is there was a lot of rumors that because of all the legislation that was happening both, both in the US and the EU, is that Apple is gonna finally allow for third-party sideloading of applications. What that means is that Apple is gonna to allow to maybe have an Amazon App Store, a Google App Store, you know, alongside the regular App Store, similar to how Android does it, right? The Play Store is not the only app store on the Android side. So having that on the Apple side was gonna be kind of nice because again, we're all about competition, but it seems like that's only gonna be coming in the EU because it's an EU legislation and the EU is making Apple do that. In the US, we're gonna be stuck with the same old app store. You know, most people don't, won't really care about it, but it's always nice, like I said, to have options overall. And then the last thing that Mark Gurman did let us know was that iOS 17 should bring some improvements to the Find My and the wallet application. The UI should change a little bit. The ability to add more devices on Find My should also be allowed. And then also just more precision and more accuracy from the Find My application. But that is all we really got from Mark Gurman. We just know that we're gonna have improvements to those two applications. But 
that is pretty much all we have with iOS 17. Now, there's not a lot of game-changing features out there because iOS 16 from a feature standpoint has been pretty refined. Now it's all about improvements, bug improvements, battery improvements, and making sure that everything is lined up correctly so we go back to what we got with iOS 15, which was unbelievable battery life from all of our iDevices because with iOS 16, my battery has been draining exceptionally fast. But that just might be me. Leave a comment down below what you guys think. Are you guys excited for iOS 17? What are some improvements you would like to see? Like I said earlier, I would love a password dedicated manager application from Apple because iCloud Keychain is great, but I would love to just have an application where I don't have to sift through like three or four different setting menus to get to my actual password manager. But that is going to do it for this video, everybody. If you did make it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And like I mentioned earlier, leave some comments down below so we can discuss on what you want from iOS 17. But if you want to watch some more iOS, iPadOS, or macOS videos, click on one of these right here. And until next time, everybody, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here. Peace.